riding a horse like Chris, you can't explain it to people, but anyway, it's, especially when he's jumping really well. That's, that's what you ride for. That's what, you, that's what you're a jump jockey for. To, to get on a horse like that, and they don't come along every day. I mean, you get some of them going in, they're getting close, and they're screwing in midair and doing things. You get a horse like him that stands so far back, lands the other side, still running. His second Hiskins was probably the best ever. I mean, he went round that course that day, absolutely brilliant. He never put a foot wrong, and it just gave him a jumping exhibition. Over the third, and away he goes. He opens up a nice margin. It's all about Christmas. They make their way down the back of the track with a lap to go. Is it just because it's the early memories, or is it because I've never seen a steeplechaser better than Crisp in the rest of my race-going life? But those runs of his stay in my mind. I was a great fan of Tom McGinley's right from the start. The combination of a great jockey and a great horse is something that will stay with me uh, forever. This is the middle of winter, but you would have thought it was Cox Plate Day. When Chris got over that last fence, the crowd really roared and welcomed him home because they saw something that they'd never seen before. You're travelling out there, you're on your own, you're jumping well and you can't hear anything. Uh, the only time I heard anything was Chris in that second uh, piskin is when I cleared the, the last and got near the turn there and uh, the uh, tremendous roar from the crowd. The jumping is done and around the home corner, it's crisp, he's a... I thought, jeez, something's coming. <laughs> and I had a quick look around, I couldn't see anybody. <laughs> it was just the crowd cheering crisp on, you know. So. All the way! He just, just coasted down this, this straight and uh, the crowd loved him. What a superstar! He could be the greatest ever! When they announced uh, that uh, the winners, the commentator says, well, he's just won by... Of Kenny Lenstrom pulling up, but that's only half the story. He says Chris has just taken 11 seconds off the course record. I mean, you get course records getting lowered by a second or half a second, uh, but you don't normally get a horse knock 11 seconds off. And that's what he'd, he'd done that day with 12 stone in his back. I put 50 cents on him, not because I wanted to win a fortune, because I wanted to be with him riding over those fences. After that, that's when Sir Chester says, well, we can't run him anymore, that's it. I think they entered him just for, to find out what a handicap gave him, and I think his, his weight was 12 stone 13. And, I mean, it would broke him down, his, his legs wouldn't stand it. The horse couldn't carry that weight and expect his legs to stand, uh, especially here with the pace they go and the tracks here. You, you couldn't possibly do it. And they had to go overseas, it was the only way out. He's a, he's a tremendous horse, that's it, and big, powerful horse too, you know, so. And he represented his great when he did go overseas. So. <laughs>